Hey, everybody. I'm trying to make it where it won't fade in and out. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can get my head on straight. <laughs> Good morning, Rebecca. There's my sister. Get on in here. We got stuff to talk about. And I got an eyelash doing weird stuff. Anyway, get in here. It's Saturday. It's family fun day. But for us, fun is going to consist of we've got a fire built. It started raining just a few minutes ago. And the dog has a um, tulip has her favorite toy, which is this duck or chicken, rubber chicken, that makes a terrible noise. And Loki can't stand it, so he howls. So it could be noisy today. Just a little bit noisy because she wants to go outside, but it's raining and she's not happy. And you just got to let her run around with her toy. It's just all it is. It's been in the trash can. And I found it because... I burnt some papers. We didn't have many papers, but I burnt some papers. Good morning in Australia. Well, it's nighttime there. It's almost midnight in Australia. Tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're getting ready for cold weather. Now, I don't know about you, but when it gets below freezing into the teens it's cold weather for us <clears throat> and we're I'm not used to that kind of cold weather and I don't like it so we're kind of battening down the hatches we've got these sub-zero temperatures coming down do you hear it that's the dog that's the dog playing with her toy it's it's annoying I couldn't take it away from her I just couldn't so we're kind of getting ready. I think I'm going to cook something fun. It could be chicken pot pie or something like that. I've got some sausage that needs to be cooked up. So I may make something with sausage and hamburger and cheese and stuff. <laughs> I might make up a casserole. Who knows? But I'm going to have some fun today cooking and probably make me another cup of coffee. Because it's just that kind of day. I've gotten all my work done for today. I've uh, spent 15 minutes on the phone with my nephew this morning. And he has a friend who wants to know how to write a book. So I gave him some, some of my little techniques for writing a book. And hopefully it'll help him write out his story. Now, everybody's got, I think everybody has a book in them. I really do. It's just, we, I, Ben didn't know that I had written four books. And, well, Sync Reflections, Body Clutter, written with Leanne. So we had both our parts to, to write. And then uh, we put together the Chaos to Clean book uh, a couple of years ago, which is all about the baby steps. And then this latest book the chaos cure and this was my most fun book to write because i played a game i played a game with myself and it was just so much fun to pull something out of a hat or bowl and write on that topic 300 to 500 words and that's what came out in this book lots of topics on every subject you can think of and oh please don't clean for seven hours straight that's not fun it's like exercising for seven hours straight that's not fun so everybody let's 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 do something fun today do something fun for you and for the family uh, you know it could be a great day to sit down with a puzzle 
I'm, I'm not fond of puzzles because we have a cat and the cat likes to play with the puzzle pieces. But what if you had a game night? Game nights could be fun. Uh, there's just lots of things you can do on a cold, rainy day. We might even get some snow in a little bit. Moving to the sunshine shine state might be a great thing in the wintertime. But in the summertime, you got hurricanes. And I can't stand hurricanes. They, I don't like hurricanes. Uh, thank you for uh, liking my email this morning about skating through life because we do that. We really do that. We just go from putting out one fire to the next fire to the next fire. And there comes a time when we just have to stop and start thinking about just the immediate future. Because if you can do that, then you can make your life where you're not putting out fires all the time. So let's take a little time today, even if it's just five minutes, to think about what's going to happen this next week. Look at your calendar. And if you don't have your calendar yet, don't wait because we are running out quickly. And by the end of the month, we'll probably be out of them. Get your calendar. Look at your calendar and see what's see what the family's up to next week. Do you have... Um, games that sporting games that you have to go to uh, I mean I know we have big football games this weekend I'm not much into football I lived football for 17 years I'm not gonna uh, but the Super Bowl what are you gonna are you gonna ha have people over for the Super Bowl party at your house <clears throat> you can start thinking right now what you're gonna cook for for a Super Bowl party. That's in uh, in February, early February. I don't know the date exactly, but if these two games that are played this weekend determine who's going to be in the Super Bowl, it's usually two weeks away. So think about what you're going to serve for your Super Bowl party. Uh, that can get a little things off the table. You're going to make a hot wings and are you going to do a cheese dip of some kind you can get some of these things made ahead of time and freeze them yeah you can actually pre-cook your wings so that you just have to thaw them and then heat them up and put some sauce on them yeah there's little things you can do all along the way now i talked about in um in my ask fly lady question this morning it was how do you cook, you know, six pounds, of ha five pounds of hamburger meat, ground beef, if you want to call it that, in your crock pot. And it's quite easy. It's quite easy. You crumble up your ground beef in your crock pot and you add a cup of water to it. I've got a video on YouTube. You can go look at it. And you have to stir it every 15 minutes so that it breaks all apart. Because I don't like big lumpy pieces of hamburger meat. I just hate that. I want little fine pieces to go in um, in my recipes. So look at your... Um, if you've got a bunch of ground beef you need to cook and it's in the freezer, get it out, thaw it up, and cook it all up. And then bag it back up into two cup packages. And then you've got your hamburger meat already already cooked. And it makes it so easy for you to have a 15-minute a, a meal that you can throw together in no time at all. So that's fun having this, this hamburger and whatever meat you want to pre-cook like that. I mean, Justin usually does a bunch of chicken breasts on his, his grill. And he puts them in the refrigerator and then he can have chicken nachos and all kinds of things. And it makes it good to have these things pre-cooked. And it, it it's just fun. Spend a few minutes today thinking about what you're going to cook next week and get some things pre-cooked and in your refrigerator ready to go.
you can clean anything with hot soapy water and a purple cloth, purple rag. Um, now, I want to tell you about our Swish and Swipe Pack, which is... The Swish and Swipe Pack is a package of purple rags and the toilet bowl brush is half price right now. And that is going off on Monday at midnight. So get that. You can also purchase it with with your the vase that we just had made. And it's like $30 and something. Regular price, but it's 20 something since this these two pieces are half price. Now get it because Monday it will be the last day for it. And that's great, Penny. That's really great that you cooked up some meat. Getting this stuff cooked up is is a really efficient way to use your time because your slow cooker's doing the work and you just have to stir it every once in a while. And set your timer on your stove to go get up and go in there and and stir it. Let's see. So skating through. I think that's the best way to clean your Keurig. Go online and look for the instructions on how to clean it. I like a crock pot better than I do a one pot that does pressure cooking. But that's me. I have used a pressure cooker. I use a pressure canner and I have a pressure canner downstairs. The, I use that if I want to put some green beans or something up, but I haven't done that in a long time, but you never know when you're going to need one. And oh, 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 let me find it. Rubber scrubbers are on a BOGO and you know how we all love BOGOs. If you put one of them in your cart, you're going to get two of them. And this tool has 101 uses. I found a testimonial last night that I had sent out and she cleaned her lampshades with the rubber scrubber. And it saved her $75 on having to... Have you priced a lampshade lately? It's just ridiculous. $75 it saved her. Now... You might want to take it outside to do it, <laughs> but when, wherever you do it, it's going to, it's going to collect a lot of dust. And once you get the main dust off, you can use your feather duster to keep it dusted, but you got to get the worst part off. Let's see. What else do we have going on? Oh, the, the multi one is 12 bucks, but you could use a coupon code on that. And the coupon code changes tonight at midnight. And the coupon code at midnight will be, the coupon code right now is declutter, somebody tell me what it is, declutter seven, I don't know. I don't, I've been working on next week's stuff, so I don't have it in my head, but tomorrow, it will be Fly Baby 172. I do remember that one. 617, I think, is Declutter 617 is today, and tomorrow it's Fly Baby 172. What is the rubber scrub? It's this brush. It has little, little pointy bristles at the top for getting into grooves and stuff, and it has these rubber bristles right here for, um, I mean, it'll take crayon off the walls. You're, you're just going to be so surprised at what this thing can clean. I like to use this on my red furniture to get the cat hair off because I have a white cat who loves to lay on the back of my red furniture. And it does a great job. Pe I keep one of these in my, sh my tub because I can use it to scrub the sides of the tub if I've had a bubble bath and different things. But I can also use it to scrub my elbows and my knees. And it, it's actually a good massage tool for 
for your neck and stuff. So it's a great tool if you will use it. It's got a 101 uses, good for back scratching. And critters love it, absolutely love it. So get, get your rubber scrubber while they're on a BOGO. We don't do this often, a couple, three times a year. And uh, um, I have a, I need to get on a, on a, um, on my soapbox a little bit. And I know y'all don't like for me to do that, but, um, the news media didn't really cover the March for Life in Washington yesterday. And I watched one video on on Twitter, and it was a time-lapse video of 100,000 people walking to protect, to give voice to the voices that <clears throat> are that don't have a voice, to the children that don't have a voice. And it's, it's sad to me, it's just really sad to me that in the United States, there are six hundred, seven hundred thousand unwanted children murdered every, every year. At the same time, we're having 600,000 people come across our border. You know, if, if, if the opposition party wants more people to vote for them, quit killing the babies. They'll grow up and they'll vote, you know, because you gave them life. But will they vote the other way? <laughs> so it's just sad. It's just sad. It breaks, it breaks my heart that, that um, they got no coverage, no coverage at all. And, <clears throat> but today's march or tomorrow's march, whenever it is, of uh, the feminist march, and I'm a feminist, I'm, I'm a female, and I believe in equal rights for women. I believe we should be paid equally, but I also believe that if I want to stay home and take care of my babies, that's my right too. And I had a feminist tell me that one time. Don't any, don't let any feminist tell you that you're wrong to want to create a home that is welcoming to your family. And now all of a sudden, Google has decided that family, the word family is an ugly word because 100 of their, how many hundreds of thousands of employees they have, said it was offensive to them. Well, they grew up in a family and now they don't want the word family used. Family can be anything. It can be a group of people that I've, I consider our, our fly lady family. I consider you part of my family. I consider the people that work with me, that help me to help you, they're part of my family. And it's just, it, it makes me sad that they co-opt a word like family, which is important. So I know I am no longer using Google. I'm not boycotting Google. I've just decided I need a different way to search the internet that I can trust. And it's all about trust. So I am going to be using a, a search engine called DuckDuckGo. And it's kind of cute. It, it actually brings up everything you want to know and it's not been tainted by some kind of bias. And I, I like it. I like the search engine. So I have deleted that search engine from my browser, Google. And I have hidden it on my phone where I don't see it first thing if I want to search something on my phone. <clears throat> it's 
That's what I'm doing. Because when family becomes an ugly word, something's wrong somewhere. I mean, you're here because you want your home. You want to feel better about yourself and your home. I read an article the other day where a lady who was a feminist who chose not to have children. And I understand that if you don't want to have children, that's fine. There's ways to do that. I'm, my husband didn't have any children. He didn't, he didn't choose to want any children. So he got a vasectomy early on when he was young. He didn't want to have children, but I had one child. And there are ways to not have children. It's just sad that people will wake up one day when they're in their 60s and 70s and not have any family. No family. No family. You know, I'm looking at my grandson who's 16 and my granddaughter who will be 13 next month. I'm looking at all this. Uh, I have a nephew who's in prison that I talked to this morning. He doesn't have any children. He has two sisters. And one he doesn't know, but the other one he knows. And you know, he has family. Maybe one day he'll get married. But I don't know. I don't. That's for him to decide, not for somebody else to decide. So I, I'm on my box, soapbox, that's pretty much it. And then the whole news media has made a big deal uh, out of Vice President Pence's wife going to teach at a Christian school. Wake up! That's where she wants to teach. She has the right to teach wherever she wants to. I have um, my son's sister-in-law adopted a little girl. There's lots of ways to have family. There are lots of, you're right, lots of ways to have family. And family is not an ugly word. Today is family fun day. Get out there and do something with your family. Do something fun. Pick up the phone and call them. As someone told me the other day, you know, corresponding with your teenagers is a little, teenage grandchildren is a little difficult because they may be busy and they can't talk, they can't talk to you right now. So send them a text and just let them know you're thinking about them. And when they get a chance, they'll text you back. Well, y'all, I've been on my soapbox long enough. Get something done fun today. It's not a job. It's not a job, but do something fun. I think I may get out, watch some um, old movies today. That's always fun to do. So thank you so much for um, all your reviews. We've had 146 reviews on the book, and they are mostly all five-star reviews. There's two three-star reviews and one four-star review, but the four-star review was a good review. So if you've read my book, go check it out and uh, write a review for me. It, it makes me, makes me happy, and I try to showcase one of them every day. Well, y'all have a good day. I love you all. Saturday Soapbox. We can call it Saturday Soapbox. Okay, that's fun. We have Friday Fun Day and then Saturday Soapbox. That's cute. We'll have a basic weekly plan to our videos. Well, I love talking to you. And I love being able to see your comments, which I haven't been able to do using using uh, Facebook Creator. But thank you for all the reviews. 
and I've got um, I, I got little things to do today. I'm going to go sit by the fire and drink a cup of coffee, another cup of coffee. I think it's coffee today, not, not, um, not tea. It's not a tea day. I had hot tea last night. I love you all. Say prayers for our politicians, all of them. Democrats, Republicans, independents, say prayers for them. They need to get their head straight. Ask God to give them wisdom. Everybody needs to come to the table. Because people are hurting. People are hurting. And it's time to put an end to all this. I mean, I, I listened to Scott Adams this morning, and he had a stepson to die from a drug overdose. And suffering, family suffering with drugs. I mean, that was Benjamin's issue. He's been clean and sober for four years. His mother had the same problems. Suffering with drugs is awful. And it affects so many families. So many families. And once they get the taste of those drugs, it's hard to eliminate them. It's unless they really want to stop it. They've got to want it. And there's not a whole lot we can do. So we've got to protect the people in this country from these drugs that are coming from China, that are coming from Mexico. And now we have states who are legalizing certain things. I heard a story last night, I don't know what I was listening to, about assisted suicide becoming okay. Think about it. If assisted, if somebody has been diagnosed with ALS or some bad disease that's go, they're going to waste away, why not go ahead and give them a suicide pill? Because it will save the insurance companies a lot of money. Have you ever heard of anything that stupid? It's just, they push so hard. This one lady that I was listening, her husband died from this disease and she had to fight for everything to try to cure her husband. Everything. So it's another way the insurance companies are going to try to take over your life or your death. I have a great doctor. I pay her $100 a month. I have health insurance. But I have this great doctor and I can email her, I can text her, I can go see her if I need to, immediate, you know, immediately. And she sends me to get blood work done. I just never thought about assisted suicide being used by insurance companies to talk, stop you from spending their money, so or your money, to to get well. That's just crazy. Okay, I'm on my soapbox. It is what it is. Just you know, pray for. Pray for our country. Pray for our politicians to do what's right. Pray. There's things can happen with prayer. Things can happen. I'll never forget. It was back summer before last, 2017, and I had this overwhelming urge to ask people to pray 
I didn't know what was going on. I got slammed too on Facebook. Got slammed. Because I asked for prayers for our politicians. I didn't say which politicians. I just said our politicians. And oh, it was awful. And the next day, at a practice baseball field, they were attacked. They were attacked by one man who was not quite right. So if you haven't read Steve Scalise's book, read it. Because he is he is, is the recipient of all those prayers. I'm surprised Facebook doesn't block the word prayer. So let's just keep praying, everybody. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our leaders that we've elected. Let's pray for our children that are being tempted by drugs. Let's pray for our doctors who are prescribing these awful drugs that gets the, gets these kids addicted. A simple thing like a knee surgery has killed many a person in this country because they gave them 60 oxycodones. Who needs that? My sister Dina had four knee replacements and she barely had to take any because she was scared of it. She was scared of it. And let's pray for our children. We do need an alternative to Facebook. I don't know what it is. I like the fun stuff on Facebook, the, the cute animal pictures and things like that. I like that on Facebook. I like the recipes on Facebook. I love all of that. And Twitter is, is snarky. I, I don't like Twitter. I get a lot of news from Twitter, but I don't like Twitter. I don't post things on Twitter. I share things on Twitter, but I don't post my feelings on Twitter. I don't have personal followers on Twitter. I, I am myself on Twitter. So if you get on Twitter and you follow me, Marla Silly, um, if you're not conservative, you don't want to follow me. That's just how I'm going to put it. I try to love everybody. Everybody. And we just have to pray for them. We, and if, if you are having bad feelings about somebody, if you're feeling hatred, if you can't forgive somebody in your life, send me an email with the word pray, prayer in the subject line. Just prayer. I think that's it. Or how to pray in the subject line. And I will send you an essay on how to pray for your enemy. Because we have to pray for them. We're commanded to pray for them. So I'm going to get off my soapbox. Y'all have some fun today. I love you all. It's prayer. Okay. Prayer. Put prayer in the subject line in big letters <clears throat> and I will automatically send you an essay on how to pray for your enemy. How to set the tone and fly babies are the ones that taught me this. And I'll give you my testimony in this essay that is all, all about it. So we have got to pray for the people we don't like. We have to pray for the liberals or the the conservatives, we have to pray for them. Even if we don't like them. Yep, we need to forgive them. It's hard to forgive, though, when, when they keep doing the same things over and over again. 
I love you all. I will talk to you later. It's going to be a good day. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. And I'm going to go sit in front of a fireplace. I love you all. See ya.